Hey, what's up guys? So we're here to talk about one of the best boss monster decks uh, as of right now in the game in 2019. So there's a lot of decks that will have like a really strong monster that is basically like the go-to card for them. And obviously with Super Quantums, I mean, King Magnus is so insanely good. Now the reason why I want to consider him one of the best boss monsters in 2019 as of right now in the game is simply due to the effect of him actually having some sort of recovery, which you guys will see. A lot of times when you make this card, or any boss monster, usually it's Utopia Lightning, go for uh, Avermax, you can go into like the BLS, a lot of things will actually be able to get over it, and then you just straight up lose because you lose all of your advantage. But with the Neo Super Quantum uh, Met King Blaster Magna, you at least have some type of recovery when you are actually making your cards, you're able to draw some. He's going to go ahead and make the uh, Mech Knight Avermax, and he's going to go ahead and activate uh, King Great Magnus' effect to go ahead and bounce that thing back. And on top of that, when this card has 6 material, you have basically a Thunder Dragon Colossus effect where you just go ahead and make it so your opponent cannot add cards from the deck to their hand. But when this card goes away, which in this case, the guy went ahead and Millenniumized Restricted and absorbed two things, this card's got 4,900 attack now. But yo, we coming back with a Snatch Duel with the Infinitrack, and we're going to go ahead and absorb his Millennium Eyes Restrict uh, that absorbed one of the Super Quantum cards. So that's some pretty good recovery over there. Just being able to get out a bunch of monsters lets you potentially go for our big boy again. And that's why I want to consider him one of the stronger boss monsters in the game. And I want to go ahead and actually give you guys some more gameplay in case you guys do want to check out this deck and uh, go ahead and play it. This next one up over here is going to be against Orcus, which would be a more of a meta duel over here. We also have a duel against a Thunder Dragon deck. And uh, the deck basically tries to get out the, of course, boss monster. And looking at a lot of decks, if they don't have the option to get over it, obviously they just straight lose. Now, a lot of decks will have maybe like one go-to card for their out of, of course, uh, against Great Magnus. You basically need something that will have an absurd amount of attack. Uh, and, and cannot be affected by card effects. It's really difficult to really deal with uh, the Exceed Magnus because on top of making it so your opponent can't search out cards, at any point he could just bounce back one of your cards. So let's go ahead and see what this player does against that because some decks, they legit, if they don't happen to have like Nibiru or they don't happen to have like anything that would uh, attribute it as a cost or whatever the case may be, it's just difficult to really deal with him. But it looks like we're seeing the Dark Warrior Orcus, which is a very competitive deck as well. And while this deck doesn't really stun too much, other than making it so your opponent cannot search, well, he's going for that Cyberstein play, now he's got Exterio, because uh, there is a back row here, so he kind of needs to maybe be uh, wary of that. But Exterio has a pretty good effect, where it stops you know, all the spells and traps, essentially, forever. Um, and then we also see the Galatea, and uh, Boral Sword is indeed out. And uh, let's see what he goes ahead and goes for. So he's going to go ahead and make Din Girsu. He's able to send that to the grave. And he's going to go ahead and also bounce back the other guy's uh, monster in the extra monster zone. He's going to go ahead and set a Crescendo, uh, which is a spell speed 3. But it doesn't really matter because it's unaffected by cards anyways. And at this point, he probably doesn't have an out. Like, like just even checking his deck... Um, there's very few decks that can deal with this once this card is out. Like I said before, if you do happen to run something in the main deck that contribute, uh, you'd have to Apollo so with so many materials. That's like maybe his only out. Um, like I said, a lot of people would just go to the Utopia, then you just bounce back the Utopia, and then they're just like, okay, well, GG. Um, there are outs to this card. It's not impossible. It's just that like some decks only have one out to it, and that's just because the extra deck room is very tight right now. Um, and it's, especially since like, most decks just can't deal with uh, the monster that fast, especially if you need to search, which I would say, you know, majority of decks do need to search in Yu-Gi-Oh! Now this is up against a Sky Striker player, and he's got uh, two hand traps over here. So let's see what he actually stops. So he goes ahead and uses the uh, Ash Blossom, but he's still got a Ghost over here. Probably needs to get rid of this uh, card, but he can't do it with this because, well, that card has an effect where uh, the least summon card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, which is quite nice. Um, you'd sometimes want to actually negate this card's effect because sometimes what will happen is the super super quantum player will draw like two to three cards and then that gives them their ability to go into the 
uh, big boy, the big boss. So he's going to go ahead and attack directly. But Magnet Lair has an effect where you're able to go ahead and just get rid of a monster as a quick effect, which is probably one of their better effects too. So we're seeing a duel where we don't open up with a boss monster. A little bit of a slower paced duel. He's got Storming and Hornet drones. I've seen a lot more people in main deck Mirror Force now. Um, but of course with the guard dragon engine uh, usually that s somewhere along the line they'll be able to stop one of the cards but if you have doubles maybe he's also got the topological okay so let's go ahead and pop all the monsters but this card does have an effect where uh, if a face of exceed monster uh, this card's point to is destroy a battle by card effect you can go ahead and special summon a super quantum monster so he's going to go ahead and also uh, get the effects of whatever he summoned and the most important effect with uh, neo super quantum the new link monster is basically just being able to get that free extra card but that card is going to go ahead and finally go away here but it's just giving you the extra cards that you need to of course uh draw so you don't uh go too minus especially with this is this card is really good. I mean, it's just discard one target super quantum monster you control. This special summon from the extract, the the upgrade. So it's just like a one card easy upgrade. Oh, he's gonna go ahead and stop that card's effect. Okay, so now he's like, oh, dude, free zones, man. So he's gonna go ahead and make the blue layer. He's gonna go ahead and be able to draw a card off that. This card's gonna go ahead and not be able to activate its effect. But our boy's coming out, and you guys already know. Once this card comes out, and we've got five materials right now, which is uh, pretty good. I mean, six is ideal. Uh, but you do have a card where you can target one and just equip it. So he's gonna go ahead and oh, he dirtying him over there. So he's gonna go ahead and equip that. So he can't, he can't, he can't do anything. So it has the effect where your opponent cannot add cards from the deck to the hand. So he's gonna go ahead and also, oh, okay, this was dirty. So the Super Quantum Mech Sword actually lets you attack multiple times. So you can actually attack three times. It's overkill. It's probably not necessary. Uh, this card was kind of cheeky though. I kind of like that because it, it is difficult sometimes to get all six. You can get like four or five easy. Um, but I mean, I guess if you had low amount of materials, it's just not that bad because you activate the effect where uh, you attach material and you bounce back one. And then your opponent's like, okay, he's affected by card effects. And you're just like, okay, activate this and then make it so it's unaffected. That card can be pretty useful um, because the Link Monster doesn't really get used uh, too often. It kind of just sits there and then it just goes away. So, you know, I don't know. I don't actually think the card is that bad. I used to think that the card was uh, very terrible. So this is up against uh, Thunder Dragons. Um, so this card's gonna make it so he cannot search, which uh, can be quite difficult um, for some decks to deal with. So he goes ahead and he also has a back rope. Is this the activation of your Thunder Monster? I don't, people don't play this, right? I, sometimes people tap weird things and like it actually is not that bad, but like, uh, I'm like, dude, what? Wh who runs that card, right? And then you lose to it. Uh, but uh, anyways. We've got blue and green, so it's not looking too good for him. He's going to go ahead and make the Sum Summer Summoner <laughs> over here. And then that's going to give him extra monster zone. He's going to go ahead and make the boss of his deck. But we already know this guy's boss monster is way better. And oh, also running Reasoning in the deck. Technically, Monster Gate's also at multiple. Uh, maybe you can just... Use the, use the dangerous as material and just go into other cards for the right color because sometimes you just need that one specific color um, and obviously well well he's actually only got this card over here but I think it's got that quick effect he's gonna go ahead and chain e tally bring out blue layer over here and he's gonna go ahead and get extra 300 I'm not sure if I, I like this guy's uh, thunder dragon build up but this card is already face down so it's gonna allow him to go ahead and go for those cards that he needs and he's going to go ahead and activate the effect of Magna. Again, just being able to draw those cards is really key here. And then pretty much once this card comes out, you're just... As long as you have the cards, you're just going to slap them all on, make your boss boy. And oh my gosh, how many materials does he have on this one? Okay, so we have five, six. Oh, right, so perfect. So now he's locked the Thunder Dragon player out of searching. He's like, yo, you say no searching? I say no searching. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have the option to boost up that card to make it extra beefy um because that's what he really needed he needs to get over this card basically this turn he's got 3600 and he's gonna go ahead and make this uh but this card could obviously just bounce back at any point and you know he can't protect his cards because well uh they're not being destroyed he's just bouncing them back he's gonna go and equip that card to it like he's, oh, okay that's actually pretty dirty like i said it keeps your, your number at six which is quite nice for the deck so I feel like the, the attack three is a little overkill though. We, not, we might not actually need that, but we'll also give you guys a deck profile in case any of you guys do want to try out this deck. Which again, I would argue this is the best boss monster deck in the game. Um, I, I used to play Cleese, and that was the easy, dude, the easiest tops ever. Well, with Cleese, when you just you literally summon towers. This is before uh, before Wing Dragon Raw Sphere Mode. This is before uh, Kaiju's. Like literally, you summon that card and it was game. I got to top ten. 
in um, Dev Pro, literally just playing that deck. Like, it was such a no-brainer easy deck. But I feel like with this deck, um, and well, the thing is, is that deck has kind of been out phased. I mean, yeah, you would still get wrecked by anything that would basically get rid of your Magnus, but at least with Magnus, like in the first duel, if he goes away, you at least get something out of it. And I would say, as far as uh, Towers goes, like, you're kind of letting your opponent do whatever they want. Like, yeah, it reduces their attack by 500, but that's like, that's not that big of a deal compared to, uh, of course, now Utopia Lightning. And then pretty much a long time ago, uh, Towers was just, it's just not as viable. By the way, the card that I'm talking about is is this card. Uh, this was <laughs> the easy, easiest wins ever. But uh, anyways, we're here to talk about the Quantum, so let me go and give you guys a deck profile. One of the best, uh, like I said, I think this is the best one, but I'm curious to know if you guys think that there's any other deck that has a better boss monster. And I'm talking about like, you make this monster and you basically win. Again, uh, there will be times where you lose out on the monster, but for the most part, that's the goal of this deck. So anyways, we got three copies of White Layer, two copies of Nessie, three copies of Red, three copies of Green, and then two copies of Sutrinoco, three copies of Blue, two copies of Dracolobe, three copies of Alphan, one one four one one Galaxy Cyclone, one copy of Reasoning, uh, the Alphan Shrike. So if you control three or more Super Quantums with different names, you can shovel as many cards your opponent controls as possible into the deck, then your opponent plus one is one monster from their extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Ooh. And then you can banish the card and one Super Quantum Fairy Alphan from your graveyard and activate one Super Quantum Mech Ship Magna Carrier from your deck. Okay, that's pretty interesting. I didn't see that card soon in play, but I mean, I don't know. This one, obviously, you're going to be able to get your cards into the grave. Maybe some recovery, but then you give your opponent to just get some little extra deck. I'm not sure how I feel about that. That's pretty cheeky. Uh, then we have, of course, Terraform, because this card is really important. Uh, and then we got Reborn, two copies of uh, World Legacy Succession. And then we've got Itali, three copies of Magna Carrier. And then three copies of Evenly Matched, one copy of Magna Slayer, two copies of Breakthrough, and the Magna Fortification over here where it lets you, uh, well, it makes it so your opponent can't target super quant cards on the field with card effects, but more likely it's gonna be immune to everything anyways. Um, but uh, during your main phase, you get to uh, target one super quant exceed monster you control and attach another face up monster you control as material. Too bad it let you detach your opponent's stuff as material, that'd be really good. Uh, for the extra deck, the three copies of Magnus, uh, two copies of one of the newer cards, Luster Rex, and then we have Magna uh, Liger, then we have the Ouroboros, two copies of Grand Pulse. Grand Pulse actually did see some play in one competitive deck that top. It's just because it, it, it does have another effect where uh, you can uh, de detach a material and then target a spell trap and pop it. And then we have uh, Avermax, then we got the uh, Infinite Track Fortress, Mega Clops. Uh, this card obviously was good during that duel with the, the guys that were playing Millennium Eyes. And then we have the uh, new Link monster for them, and of course the Police Patrol, RKB Cop, and TCG. For the, the side deck, he played uh, three copies of Nibiru and three copies of Dark Ruler No More. Three copies of Prohibition, I guess, against whatever that you're playing. If you know that specific card, uh, it can be good. Maybe you just slap it on, you just bake it so they can't get rid of it. <laughs> just say that that Wing Dragon Ross Sphere mode, you'll be good. But more than likely, you won't have the monsters anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, or just call it Kaiju. Uh, and then we have Impermanence, three copies of Red Reboot. You know, I'm, I'm curious. Um, and also shouts to you uh, for building this dead profit. But uh, I usually would argue that uh, impermanence is just better. I know Breakthrough School does have that double utility, but sometimes you just need that uh, impermanence like ASAP. You need that effect to be viable uh, faster. And I just will argue that it's better. And also the uh, one where you can do piercing and attack three times. I feel like that's kind of overkill. I know it is technically searchable, but at the same time, I think this card is just overall better. But I think that we can maybe utilize even just like an upstart goblin in this deck could be quite good. But uh, anyways, yeah, that is it for the deck profile, guys. Let me know your thoughts on it down below. I also think that Dark Ruler No More could be a fantastic card uh, to go ahead main deck as well because uh, while your opponent doesn't take any damage, like you literally make this card and then you tack over the problematic card and then some decks just literally don't have an out to this guy over here. But anyways, that is some Super Quantums and is one of the stronger boss monster decks in 2019. Let me know your thoughts down below on the deck. And once again, thank you, Profit. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, drop a like on it. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell so you don't miss out on Yu-Gi-Oh! duels with a deck profile. And if you guys want to send me any replays, feel free to go ahead and send in the YRP file. Make sure it's replaced at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. I'm signing out. Peace.